Hey guys, and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I just wanted to talk briefly about some bits and pieces that have been discussed about survival on planets and bases. Uh, this is kind of a theory crafting session. Um, it is going to be going on what Chris and Dan Truffin and uh, some of the stuff they have been saying about base building, planetary survival, um, environmental effects, all that sort of stuff as well. Uh, but it's for me, it's important to get your opinions on some of this stuff so that we can help push um, Star Citizen into the kind of game that we want it to be uh, and that's what we should be doing at this stage of the game's development we should be discussing these game mechanics as we understand them at the moment um, elaborate upon them kind of fantasize slightly about them and say well what does, what does this mean in the future uh, and then kind of say yes we want it like this or no we don't want it like this do we want survival mechanics in it all do we how do we want them handled all this sort of stuff. So let's start by talking about base building info. CIG are currently working on smaller modular bases, satellites, outposts and stuff, but um, bases and outposts for planets um, is what we're talking about here. We've seen um, some little outposty things in those 3.0 demos, as well as some various concept art, and we know that they're working on a uh, incredibly modular system in a similar way to how they handle their satellites. So they're going to be able to... Um, uh, everything's going to have some form of purpose, whether that's a power generator, uh, some form of defense system, uh, labs, scanners, storage facilities, um, all, all that sort of stuff is going to have rooms for purpose, uh, and there might be adjoining corridors and stuff like that as well. So the first iterations that we're going to be seeing are these small outposts, um, and they may be NPC occupied or mission based. They might have items in that we need to go and retrieve, but they're not going to be player owned yet. Eventually, though, they want players to own their own uh, and be able to build their own. So there will be various buildings and modules that you can build from living quarters, storage, science labs, harvesting, power generators. Um, you're going to need to supply um, some of these buildings with um, materials to function. So that could be fuel, um, that might just be materials. Uh, basically, um, the, the way they, they currently are looking at it at the moment is that you'd have uh, a general exterior for a building and then you'd be able to modularize it with different interiors so you'd be able to go well let's build here let's build here let's build some corridors and then go inside the building and you go this is a lab this is a power generator this is a storage area and set it up like that the um then you'll be connecting those buildings together so that they've got power and more function um the idea is eventually to have reasonably large settlements i suppose with fences and purposes whether it be a hangar type base or a research or a mining facility or as an example they given um here they envision that the start of this like player owned outposts and buildings is um, say that you have a two-man operation on a planet's surface where you're extracting materials and making them into drugs in a lab and then you expand that with more silos, uh, more storage for more chemicals and that sort of stuff. And then eventually get landing strips where ships can come in and load up um, with the drugs that you've made and then go off and sell them in another form of space. I suppose that could be, doesn't necessarily have to be a pirate operation either. That could be a legitimate drug business. So my thoughts on bases here and industry, I suppose, because that's effectively what a lot of bases will be. They'll be used for creating some form of stuff, extraction for mining, um, storage for stuff, um, hangers lots of different things you can use a base for um, but it's exciting it's very exciting I love industry and games I suppose my worries here for bases are that all the good um, amount of like space and good locations will get sucked up um, but there could be a huge amount of locations because of the of the like size of the planets here so maybe it will be so sparsely populated with bases that it will still be hard for, for you to find bases and um, I says my worry is that I've seen MMO games where you just you can't build a house anymore because immediately like on the second day all the housing plots are taken but star citizen is on a much huger scale and again are these bases persisting when i log off so if they are i need to defend them how do i defend them how heavily do i need to defend them will someone just steal my base when i log off and um, so that sort of stuff needs to be handled appropriately i think orgs and some players um, are going to find this gameplay absolutely amazing and it's kind of a natural progression of the sort of stuff that you'd want to do in Star Citizen. But, as with everything in Star Citizen, it does need to be implemented correctly to be fun and accessible. Please tell me your thoughts on that, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about defence and stuff in a second, actually. So let's talk a bit about planetary survival and what they've discussed already. You're going to be able to set distress beacons to call for aid from NPCs and players in the verse, as well as ask for services, but you can 
crash on a planet uh, or like a desert station or something and you'll have to survive until help arrives now you might have to repair your beacon or um, in some cases um, players might even want to live planet side obviously as with bases and Recently, there's been discussion from Chris Roberts and Dan Truffin about survival gameplay planet side in Star Citizen. On planets for long term stays, you're going to have to bring everything you need for your daily life there. Um, NPCs and players may require access to food and water, as well as heat uh, and, and life sustaining systems. We can sort of see the idea on um, the larger capital ships where they obviously have life support, um, but they have kitchens uh, and stuff like that as well, where um, uh, NPCs will be able to eat. But you see that on even the smaller ships, like on the Constellation and that sort of stuff, living areas. Um, starvation may be a thing. Dan Truffin said, it won't be like, oh, you've crashed, you have no water, you're dead. It will take a while. We'll give you some ample opportunity to find something to eat or hunt or something, or even steal other people's resources, or calling for someone to pick you up. But if you're still there after a few days and not eating, not drinking, your health will start to degrade to the point where you might die. Risks and environments on planets. So there is going to be a huge, huge amount of ecosystems, terrain, habitats, uh, and all that sort of stuff they've already got planned and in most cases created for planets, including their own weather, hazards, gameplay. Uh, in some more words of Dan Truffin, there will be different challenges in terms of weather, wildlife and resources, more variety of ecosystems than Star Wars. If you crash and set uh, off a distress beacon, you might have to survive a while until rescued, um, hunt for food, search for water, find some special type of material that you need to use to repair your ship. Environmental vi variability is not just cosmetic it directly benefits the types of gameplay available reduced visibility from weather impaired navigation due to radiation um, natural gating um, limiting what the player can do due to their equipment all that sort of jazz um, trying to make it um, systematic or systemic in fact um, if I can read my own words um, versus scripted so that when they build environments everything just works they'll have a large number of really well constructed environments and ecosystems that will be interesting to explore um, also I remember them talking uh, previously about um, different buffs and debuffs or well, different debuffs that you'd effectively get from environments so um, lots of environment conditions lots of um, different damage types will affect you in different ways Environmental hazards, so they'll do different damage to different vehicles, different items. Um, acid might corrode your vehicle um, or weapons or items in certain ways that cause them to break down. Sandstorms might um, uh, cause ballistic weapons to jam, that sort of stuff. You'll get that kind of occasional problem due to a specific weather condition. Some planets, as I said, they might have an acidic atmosphere and not suitable at all for uh, long-term stays of players or building bases at all. Um, some will cause you damage um, to your equipment, your vehicles, and there will be forms of mitigation to a lot of this stuff as well. Um, the correct suits, the correct upgrades, the correct um, um, modules and stuff in vehicles. And they've talked previously about various different types of weather that they can do in system at the moment. We saw sandstorms, they've talked about meteor showers, and they've talked about a full weather systems across planets. And planets are going to be entirely different based on um, where they are in a solar system, how close they are to the sun, um, lots and lots of different things going on with their biomes. They have talked about possibly doing natural disasters and stuff in the future they've said it's incredibly hard to do stuff like volcanoes and stuff where there's like running water or lava and floods and stuff that they're, they're going to be quite hard to do um, but there will be um, water on planets there will be ability to swim um, there's going to be boats there's going to be eventually hopefully explorable underwater that's what they want to do but not in first iterations of things uh, wildlife as well so this is a major thing on planets. This could be a hazard, a source of food, or a source of value in science or biodata or uh, other materials on planets, maybe even farming. Uh, we've seen the giant sandworm and an unknown sized dragonfly, as well as lots of different types of flora. Star Citizen is going to have a huge range of detailed creatures, planets, and life forms. These will have their own schedules, um, life cycles, wants, needs, personalities, and um, AI subsumption basically all goes into that, and act very similarly to other NPCs and aliens. Buildings will also require protection from the elements. Uh, again, more words of Dan Truffin, the man in the know. You will have to make sure that you can survive weather on a planet, which will also be what element that you're surviving is important. In some planets, will have to survive overnight. You might get a minus 100 degrees and you'll freeze to death. Um, so you'll have to have power to 
power heaters to keep your base warm enough for you to survive the night. There is a missing link in all of this that Sean Tracy's actually discussed, an important issue that they need to get correct, and that's ground to air. So infantry can't touch ships in Alpha 2.6. If you want to lock down Grim Hex, for example, a single ship can prevent, in a lot of cases, anyone getting in the air. And then anyone spawning ships in, they just get the ships destroyed. In the future, some of these areas might be patrolled by NPC ships and other NPC measures, or um, ships might jump in and if you start killing people regularly on a landing pad. But planet side and we saw how effective the freelancer was in the 3.0 gamescom demo um, at just wrecking someone now obviously ships might not be able to get into every situation but there is a missing link here um, and that is th those those uh, ways of taking out vehicles ways of taking out spaceships with ground-based weapons so titan armor and vehicles is one they've mentioned it would be easy to put tracked vehicles into the game that the tech is already there um, but vehicles in general could have more of a chance against ships if they have the correct weapons and gear uh, and the same goes with titan armor this is a big suit of power adama and uh, we don't know exactly how it's going to work yet they're, they're still building it into the game uh, but it's for infantry the assumption here is that it's going to be very powerful um it's going to be on the ground and it's got big guns pew, 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 um and at the very least vehicles and titan armor may may be able to think um ships to think twice before engaging or something or at least about to chase them off in some situation uh, ground turrets so we've seen automated turrets in a previous monthly report they just showed us some concepts of them so we know that at least they're thinking of them it makes sense that, that there will be some ground turrets uh, there'll be turrets on space stations and um, on satellites uh, and that sort of stuff so hopefully we should be seeing various turrets and defenses going to outposts along the ground and that are specifically there to take out ships that get too close um, we will be seeing at some point larger personnel um, anti-ship and anti-vehicle weapons like rocket launchers and the shoulder mounted railgun which I think they're trying to get into Star Marine at the moment um, so that at least infantry can fight back against a ship or a vehicle without getting entirely trashed. Star Citizen holds a strong philosophy that if an NPC can do something, then a player should be able to do it as well. Now, this might not be the best idea in every situation, though. The first iterations of planetary landings, small outposts and weather, uh, and environmental effects and all that sort of jazz should be coming in Star Citizen Alpha 3.0. We won't have base building uh, or whatever survival mechanics that they want to try, but it will give us some tangible gameplay of what Star Citizen is going for in the future, it, an actual vertical slice of the persistent universe, as it were. It's very important that backers and uh, potential players um, talk about what they want from the game in regards to mechanics, especially in regards to survival. I'd be happy with NPCs and bases requiring access to food, um, or if you um, uh, bring it in or whatever to store it there, or NPCs might charge you more um, if they have to go and get food themselves effectively, and you don't have it on the site, they'll charge you a lot more. They go, I'm, I'm not standing for this, so I'm going to call in a space pizza, whatever, something like that, you know. Um, I'm not sure um, that I p want to, like, personally eat in-game. I don't think that, that should be a requirement on a planet, but that's entirely my opinion. I like the idea of light survival mechanics, diverse industry, um, base building on planets, uh, and, the, and the ability for those bases to remain relatively safe from other people, and everyone to have access to, to base building. Obviously, there might be um, costs there, and risk-reward about um, if you're doing a big mining operation, that might be quite obvious. Um, and I'm super excited to see ground vehicles, big guns, and other cool weather effects, ecosystems, and stuff like that that CIG have created in the future. But what do you guys think? How would you like them to see um, implement these mechanics? To some players, it's going to be kind of far away from what they want. They might just want to pew pew uh, on a ship and fly around and do space combat. But you might still crash and ha or have to take shelter on a planet. There's going to be times that you will probably will have to go planet side even if you're not intending to. And there are going to be people that just want to live planet side like a nomad. Um, remember, commenting on any of our Star Citizen videos during a given month does give you a chance to win uh, a ship. And for January, that's an Avenger Titan. So please comment and tell me what you think about stuff. Um, it does help me genuinely. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, as that also genuinely helps me. Uh, and check out my Star Citizen YouTube channel for... Stars as a news, info, gameplay, Squadron 42 stuff, uh, Star Marine stuff, guides, all that sort of jazz. Take care, and I'll see you in the verse.